All right, welcome to this in-depth review and comparison of some of Zen Percussion's Gouda drums. These are all brass tongue drums that they have. They, this is the Coin, the Ultra Coin, and the Ortis Ultra Bass models. Um, I'm gonna do a quick sound uh, demonstration so you can hear the difference in the volume and the tone of each drum. And, uh, and then I'll also compare it to a regular run-of-the-mill kind of steel tongue drum. And then I'll go into depth about each of the pros and cons of each drum and what makes them each uh, so unique. And I'll go into depth a little bit about the uh, scales and the uh, designs and some of the accessories that come with it or the optional ones like the pickups. If you have any, if you have a good speaker system or headphones, I strongly suggest that you use them. The speaker in your cell phone or computer doesn't really work well with these tongue drums. First up is the coin. the aluminum sides of the coin and ultra coin. Just a quick comparison here is a Kosmoski steel tongue drum. So as you can tell from that demonstration, the brass instruments have a really nice tone, a really nice timbre. It's very warm, um, it's very unique. Most tongue drums, almost all of them I think, are usually made out of steel. So it's really cool to hear these instruments um, in uh, brass. Um, what also helps is the double tongue construction um, featured on all these models. These ones have some triple tongues. So this center one has E and then the one above it, the second tongue is uh, the next E up on an octave higher. Um, that gives it a, a nice fuller tone when you hit it. 
usually I kind of aim to hit both of the tongues so that you get that lower and higher overtone. With some of the bigger tongues, with the lower frequencies, you can hit just the low one, or you can hit the high one. With the smaller, um, higher notes, it's really hard, it's basically impossible to hit just the big tongue or the small tongue. You just hit both of them. Um, so if you're looking to get twice as many notes out of this double tongue construction, um, you're not going to really get it. But on some of these lower notes, like on this C sharp, I can hit the low or the high. Especially if you mute it with a finger. Um, so that gives you a little bit more um, range if you're trying to squeeze out a few more notes out of these drums. Um, I really like the coin model for a few reasons. I really like the timbre and the tone of it. It's got a really nice uh, balance between the aluminum and brass sides. Um, the size of it, it's very thin, fairly small, so it's easy to take traveling on car trips or hikes, um, which makes it a lot of fun. Also fits in your lap very easily, and the notes are all so close together. It's very easy to get to wherever you want on the drum without having to reach too far to the next note. With some hand pans or some of these larger tongue drums, you have to kind of reach and um, it's not a big deal, but it is something to think about. Uh, let's see here. The aluminum side has only eight notes. It doesn't have the center tongue. I don't like the timbre of the aluminum side as much as I like the brass. It still sounds nice. Um, it's comparable to the steel. It's a little bit colder sounding. Um, the attack is a little bit more pronounced. It doesn't have such a warm sustain. So I do end up playing the brass side a little bit more, or quite a bit more actually, than the aluminum side. The Some of the cons of this model, with it being smaller, you aren't going to have as uh, loud of a drum. You could probably hear the difference between these two drums compared to this one. This one's um, noticeably quieter. The aluminum side is a little bit louder than the brass side. It is fairly expensive for a tongue drum. It's $600. Uh, so each side is about 300 bucks, which when you think about it is a, a fairly decent price for such a unique sounding drum, um, but certainly not cheap. And uh, is there any other cons? That's about it. Um, I want to talk about the Ortis Ultra Bass next. They do have a, a smaller model of this that I have not played. It's about the same size as the coin, uh, about the same price. Might be slightly cheaper, about the same price. Ortis Ultra Bass is bigger. It runs about $800. What is noticeable about this one is it's got the triple tongues on the lower eight notes. The upper three are the double tongue construction. So you get uh, three notes, uh, D2, D3, D4. Uh, this gives it a much richer overtones and gives you a little bit of um, flexibility in playing the lower or higher octave, especially with these lower notes. So when I play on this low A, I can hit the A2, or I can hit A3. If I hit kind of right in the center, I can get a little bit of both. Okay. What I really like about this drum is that triple tongue construction and these lower notes. Um, when I Bought this, I bought it because it's got these such low notes compared to the compared to that coin. Now that said, some of the drawbacks of the Ortis is that it's only one-sided. You can see it's got this goblet kind of uh, shape, which um, makes it really nice to sit in your lap. It's very comfortable. 
I don't feel like it really mutes the drum much at all, having it sit flush against my, my legs. Um, it makes it really loud. Between all three of these drums, I think this is the loudest. These two are about the same size, but this one's probably a little bit louder. Now with these triple tongues, I can play, like I said, I can play the A2 or the, the A3 and A4. With this model, there's a, a bit of a limit in the scales you can choose from. So I got the D Celtic minor uh, scale, and that gives me some redundancy in some of the notes. So I have this A2, A3, A4 set of tongues over here, and then this set of tongues is also A3, A4, and then A5. You can't really tell the difference. It's a little redundant having two sets of A's, and I've got these three D's in the middle, easy to play each one independently, but I've got another D3 over here and another D4 up here. And with tongue drums, you only get a few notes in the drum and that's in your set. You don't get to change those obviously, so I try to maximize how many notes I get in a drum to give me the most flexibility and uh, dynamic in playing. So. One of the drawbacks with this drum, with this scale, is there's some redundancy in the notes. I don't feel like uh, I've got as many notes as I would like to. There's 11 tongues total here. Uh, the timbre of this is a little bit different, if you haven't noticed already. Uh, you can kind of hear the aluminum side of this a bit more than, um, say, the coins. The coins also have the notes on the bottom, which act as sympathetic harmonic resonators. So when you play an E on the front, the E on the back also starts reverberating. So it gives a really nice color, really nice tone that the Ortis doesn't have. So for example, I'll play an E note on the Ortis, and then I'll play it on the coins. And let's see if you can kind of hear the difference in the tone. I might not notice the difference, but if I play some other notes here, same notes more or less on here. The coin seems to have a little bit of a longer um, sustain and resonance. Um, the Ortis has this, um, uh, it has a longer sustain than the smaller coin, um, but just a, a slightly different timbre. And it's not better or worse, it's just a little bit different. Um, one of the other drawbacks uh, from the Ortis is mainly just that it's, it's expensive. Um, I think it's around $800 without any of the actual accessories or designs, though I did get a custom design and I did get the um, magnetic pickup, which I'll talk about later. So it's an expensive drum, but if you're gonna go all out and you want a big drum, a louder drum, and you want those lower notes, this is a good pick. Um, they just released a video of a custom one in the F sharp minor. Um, I would check that out and see what kind of um, different scales or note possibilities you could get. You can contact Zen Percussion and talk to Max and throw out some ideas for scales. I would encourage you to um, utilize these triple tongues. You don't need a second A or a second D or even a second C. So that gives you even more notes. One of the benefits between the Ortis and the smaller coin, the little coin has nine notes, the Ortis has 11. Those extra two notes go a long way in being able to compose um, a lot more melodies. And finally, their newest model, the Coin Ultra. It is basically just a bigger version of the smaller coin. It's got a similar shape and design. 
What is notable about this one is, as you might have heard or noticed, it has such a long resonance and sustain. Gives it a really nice um, melodic kind of feel. It's a little, maybe a little less percussive and more more tonal. Um, with it having 11 notes, again, it gives me exponentially more playability um, than the smaller coin. The tone of it is pretty similar, but this one has the longer resonance. And it's obviously bigger and it's significantly, noticeably louder than the, than the smaller coin. If you were anticipating playing with other musicians, say like with an acoustic guitar, the smaller coin would just barely be able to keep up with um, acoustic guitar. These ones would have uh, an easier time um, being heard in a live setting, though amplification would probably needed if you're playing a more louder um, set. You can get more custom scales than the Ortis. The Ortis goes all the way down to a D2 note, which is so low you can barely hear it. I actually don't use that lowest D2 note too much because it's, it's fairly quiet. If it's amplified you can hear a bit more. I usually play it with its fifth, with the A, D and A, so that I can hear it a little bit better. The Ultra Coin goes all the way down to G2. Um, this one goes down to B flat too, which is still pretty low and gives a really rich um, tone. But you get a little more flexibility. I think they could do more custom scales with the Coin Ultra, which is pretty cool. Cause again, some of these triple notes are a little redundant and I don't have that same kind of redundancy with this one. Like I said earlier, I don't play the aluminum side as much, but it does sound nice. I really like the lower notes with the aluminum side on both coin models. The higher notes, they sound nice. They're, they're very cutting. They really cut through the, through the mix really sharply, and they might sound kind of tinky, clanky, similar to the steel drum, um, just very metallic sounding, whereas the brass side, still metallic, but it just has a nice warm feel to it. These lower notes sound a little softer to me, a little gentler, they're not as piercing. And I think one of the reasons why this drum also resonates so strongly is because I got the uh, B flat pentatonic scale. So the Pentatonic scale, as far as I can tell, will probably give you the most reverberation sustain because of the harmonic series, just the natural acoustics of, um, of sound. So if you're looking for something with maybe slightly less sustain or you want some more variability, have that aluminum side be a scale that shares many of the same notes, but not all of the same notes. Um, so for example, I got uh, this in B flat. I want to make sure that the, each of those three tongues in the B flat would resonate independently pretty well. So I made sure I got two B flats on the aluminum side to help that reverberation. I would recommend first and foremost, go to gouda-drum.com. They have a ton of videos on all the different scales. You can order custom scales or pick one of the ones they have already made but they have tons of videos on the scales on different drum models. My suggestion on the scales would be to listen to all those videos, really find one that you really like. Maybe practice on a keyboard or a MIDI controller, just set out some different scale options and see how it sounds uh, jamming or composing with just those eight or nine or 11 notes because it is kind of limiting only having those set of few notes. My other recommendation a lot of the drum scales go from the root note at the center to the fifth. That's the next uh, note up. So for instance, on this Ortis, it goes from D to A. And 
then it just ascends up from there. I would recommend that you try and find a scale that you like that has a jump that goes up to a minor or major third, or maybe even a fourth. It gives you a little bit more flexibility and playability. What do I mean by that? When I'm playing with this Ortis, I have a D minor palette to work with. The Celtic minor is missing the sixth, which um, I really miss. I really like that sixth, but anyways. Along with that D minor palette, I can kind of get away with playing the A minor pentatonic scale or the C major pentatonic scale. F major is the same scale as D minor, same notes, but that F isn't until way up here. I wish I would have had a lower F note to give it a stronger F major feel if I wanted to. But since it jumps from the root to the fifth, it skips past that, that minor third. And to me, that is missing out on a lot of um, versatility. When I ordered this Coin Ultra, I basically got a D minor um, setup with that uh, that third, that F here. So if I want to, I can play F major, or I can play it in the D minor. And then I threw that minor six, the B flat, as the center, which gives it now kind of like a, if we take the B flat as the root note, gives it a Lydian uh, scale or a golden Arcadia, which I really like. So that gives me a little bit more versatility versus just being kind of locked into a D minor. Now I can play D minor, F major, B flat, Lydian, which is a major scale, major mode, as well as the A minor pentatonic, C major pentatonic, and G minor pentatonic. So I get a lot of versatility with that setup. But uh, just go to the website to check out all their scales. Also, one last thing. This uh, smaller coin model, it's in an E major scale uh, Aurora, which is missing the fourth, which I'm fine with missing that fourth note. The Aurora scale usually ends with the sixth, which is a C sharp. But knowing how these double tongues work, I asked to have it customized and have that C sharp, the sixth, uh, put down an octave lower. And I still can get that, that high C sharp, as well as the low C sharp. So I kind of got an extra note out of that. And one of the reasons why that worked is because I've got the low and high C sharp tongues on the aluminum side as well. So again, things to think about to get the most out of your double tongues or triple tongues or double-sided drums. Next up is the talk about the designs of the drums. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, getting a custom design um, might be in your best interest. They've got a lot of really cool designs though. This, uh, Flower of Life design is one of theirs. It looks fantastic. I like the designs that have more or less a balance, about 50-50 of the brass and the paint showing. So you can just see like how, how much this one just really pops and sticks out. Um, versus this, you can't really see a lot of the thinner line work. So if you're going to do a custom one, just be aware of how thick the lines are and think about how much paint versus the metal is showing. Um, the aluminum side looks really great too. You can get all different kinds of paints and colors and uh, it could be up to like 50 to $100 extra for those custom designs. So if you're short on money, skip it and just get one of their designs. They have lots of them. But uh, good quality work, they basically look as good as they sound. And to me, if you're spending that much money, it's worth it to pay the extra 50 or $100 to make it uh, really look exactly the way you want to. And they're pretty good at uh, communication emails so that you can uh, make sure it's centered and sized just the way you want to. Uh, 
All right, so for the accessories, like I mentioned, they sell these cool magnetic pickups, these piezoelectric pickups that just stick right onto the drum. Boom. Um, they get it for the double-sided ones. You can have it on the front and back so that you get one for the aluminum and for the brass side. This is helpful, especially with the smaller models. These are very quiet instruments. If you're planning on performing with other musicians, it's gonna need some amplification. I prefer using um, the shotgun mic. It's really good at picking up just the noise that's in front of it and canceling out the noise that's on the side. These pickups work pretty well doing that too. I'm gonna do a quick demo of what it sounds like with the microphone and then with the pickup so you can hear the difference. All right, so it sounds pretty good. Maybe you notice when I hit the larger, lower frequency tongues, there's a little bit of a springy noise. Uh, the microphone's attached to the drum, so it really picks up the vibrations of the drum, and it just seems like the lower frequencies rattle and vibrate the drum so much that it creates this springy kind of noise in the pickups, which uh, is a pretty big downside. So the pickups are $80, not terribly expensive, not terribly cheap either. It uh, might be a good option for you if you don't like to use microphones. Um, the pickups do need phantom power though, so it's not uh, ideal for traveling around. Um, they do also have uh, uh, pickups where they have like just like quarter inch um, uh, inserts where you can just plug it in versus having this magnetic one. I opted for the magnetic one. Maybe the quarter inch ones work better. Um, if you have a model like that, please let me know. I'd like to hear what your, your thoughts on it. All right. And last but not least, some of the accessories that come with the drum. All of them come with some kind of rope. They are for decoration and also a little bit for padding because the two shells are glued together and you don't want the um, hemispheres to be cracked and separated. So it gives a little bit of a, a buffer and a padding for the drum. There are some kind of like jute or hemp kind of feel. I think they look really nice and they don't really muffle or change the tone or volume of the drum. Uh, sometimes they will rattle though on the drum. So if I'm recording, I might take them off, but otherwise I keep them on. This black one, some kind of rubbery, maybe synthetic kind of uh, fabric, different from the from the jute, hempy rope kind of stuff. But I think they look great. Each drum comes with a set of mallets. Um, for these high quality tongue drums that you're paying for, these mallets kind of suck. You can see that they're they're pretty long, which is nice. They don't need to be that long, maybe. Very, very, very thin. And the, the heads have to be soft. I've tried lots of different mallets and they have to be soft. Otherwise you're gonna clank and damage your drum. Uh, but these are just too soft, they're too light. So 
So um, these mallets that came with the Kosmoski steel tongue drum, a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker, shorter. You can just hear the difference. I get much more volume and they're just the right uh, density. They're not too hard. So you might have to shop around for some mallets. I usually play with my hands. Uh, I will use the mallets if I'm playing with two drums. And uh, it's a lot of fun to play with two drums, um, especially like if they're the same model, they have the same timbre. You can get lots of different cool chord progressions or melodies with all the different notes available. And I'll use the mallets for that so I don't have to reach really far with my hands. So a good set of mallets will be helpful, especially if you're playing with multiple instruments. Lastly, the bags. Pretty cool bags. Um, they are made specifically for the drum, this one's for the coin. They have a pouch, very handy. Uh, not so handy for these long ass mallets. They don't really fit. Though, um, each time I've ordered, they've given me new bags. So maybe they've got a different bag with bigger pouch now. Uh, it zippers up. I put in some extra padding. They're bags, they're not cases. Uh, these, I'm assuming, are somewhat fragile. Again, you don't want these to crack or break. You don't want any of the tongues to dent. Um, so you might want to invest in some more sturdy casing if you're worried about that. If you travel around with it a lot, uh, I'd be very, very careful. I added some extra padding to this coin one. Uh, the Ultra Coin came with backpack straps. Very handy with it being such a large drum. Uh, I wouldn't want to carry that over my shoulder or just by the hand, so that's pretty nice. The Ortis came with a custom one to handle that bottom side. If one of the tongues do become dented, that happened one time with a, a previous coin, the first one I bought, the kid was playing on and smacking it so hard that that center ding tongue uh, went in a little bit and my heart broke a little bit, but I was able to fix it really easily. I just took um, a little strap and slid it in between the tongue was able to lift it back in place used a tuner on my app uh, a tuner app on my phone and I was able to bring it back into tune no problem you wouldn't be able to tell the difference so these could come out of tune if you press too hard or bang it but it's pretty easy to fix all right and then lastly I talk about stands um, you can see I'm using your run-of-the-mill snare stand for this coin it works pretty well. Um, I'm always afraid of accidentally knocking it over. Um, it's not super sturdy and it's top heavy. So uh, not, not the best, though it does work. I think uh, Zen Percussion does sell some kind of like wooden stand. It's like 160 bucks or something. And probably not practical for traveling with. The snare stand, a little bit easier to travel with. And you can obviously adjust the size. So if you're uh, sitting, standing, whatever. What I like a lot better are these uh, conga stands. Used for conga drums. Um, very strong, very sturdy. I can adjust the size. Not as travel friendly, though I can break it down and set it up in you know five, ten minutes and get it just the way I want to. But much more sturdy. I'm not worried about knocking it over so much and it works with both the smaller coin and these larger drums. Um, I've noticed with the lower tongues, it does kind of rob the resonance just a little bit. They, they resonate a tiny bit better when they're just sitting in my lap. And it's totally fine to have them just sitting in your lap. I think they sound great. You don't really muffle it so much. Um, but if you're playing with multiple instruments, it's nice to have these stands. So um, you might want to look into finding some of these conga stands or if you have any experience with other stands, please let me know in the feedback and comments. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps up this review and comparison of the Zen Percussion Gouda drums. Again, just go to their website, check out all the different models. They also have uh, steel tongue drums um, rather than just the brass and aluminum ones. But these brass ones, they just sound so so nice, so golden, buttery in their tone. Um, really unique, I haven't seen any other tongue drums like that. 
and uh, it, to me it rivals the the tone and sound of a hand pan. So please give me any feedback or comments if you like, and thanks for watching.